Okay, one of the first points that Professor Poole makes is that the structure of forensic interview protocols are considered by many to be time-honored. And what she means by that is most protocols use very similar sequencing for forensic interviews. And there are more commonalities among forensic interview protocols than there are differences. So she says the process is time-honored. She means greeting the child, establishing rapport, getting to know the child, establishing the ground rules, talking about the abuse, closure, transitions, all those kinds of things are part of nearly every protocol. If you look up here, I have a few bullet points from chapter four that she uses to set the table. One is that these sequences, these processes in a forensic interview are not rigid. You don't have to follow them all the time. They are designed to be flexible. And Child First, Finding Words, truly believes that it's a flexible protocol. And most protocols make that point, but a lot of people don't understand that. So Professor Poole starts out by making the observation that these sequences, these stages in an interview protocol are not rigid. There's enough flexibility that is built into all these protocols, and that must be honored. The next thing she suggests is that simply because there is a sequence, simply because there are guidelines, simply because there's a process doesn't mean if someone follows that process that they're doing a good job. It's how you execute that process that matters. You can know the rules. You can follow them in sequence. You can do the things that the protocol says to do. But if you don't do them correctly and you don't read the child before you, you're not going to do a very good job. And simply following the rules doesn't make for a good interview. You'll also see up here a reference by Professor Poole to defense lawyers. And what she's talking about there is it's the flip side of this notion that just because you follow the protocol doesn't mean you did a good interview. The flip side is just because someone deviated from the protocol or left something out, that doesn't mean they did a bad interview. And many defense lawyers embrace this rigidity, which doesn't work either way. They argue in court and they cross-examine in court. They suggest that the forensic interviewer didn't follow the protocol, they eliminated something, or they didn't do the protocol exactly the way it's written, that somehow that made for a bad interview. Of course, there may be times where the interviewer avoided something or the interviewer didn't follow some aspect of the interview protocol that does have the potential to impact the quality of it. Sometimes it's just an independent decision by the interviewer that that part of the protocol is unnecessary. The thing is, for forensic interviewers, and we'll talk about this later in this course, if you leave something out, if you change the protocol, if you deviate, you need to have an articulable basis for doing so. You need to be able to explain why you didn't follow the protocol, what it is that was different in this case with this kid that caused you to deviate. And also, if you make a mistake or you don't follow one aspect or two aspects, that doesn't mean it's a terrible interview or that the outcome is poor or bad or the child had their memory influenced. There's a lot of variables that go into whether a child had their memory influenced. So when Professor Poole talks about here defense lawyers, she's talking about the fact that a lot of defense lawyers have focused on things that are left out, sometimes minor things, sometimes arguably major things, and argued that since that's missing, the interview is not only poor, but has no credibility. That's not true. That's not true at all. And of course, Child First Finding Words believes in a flexible interview. It's a semi-structured interview protocol by definition. And we'll talk more about Child First Finding Words later in this chapter discussion.